Hello everyone, and welcome here to this game of StarCraft. That is part of our in-house Brozone Layer tournament. This is the winner's match of Group B. Uh, my name is Thako, and I'm joined here today by Snow. How you doing over there? Very good, very good. Although, you know, not looking forward to, to uh, casting my own games here. It is always a slightly difficult thing to do. Um, but we'll see. First, your opponent as our blue Terran player here on Yamsu in the bottom left. It is the Prince of Bro. Do you know it's a Bro Zone Lair tournament when there are hilarious Batman faces everywhere? Right? I love those <laughs> things. And of course, our Zerg in the upper right in the purple, maybe, is Snow. Yes, it is purple. <laughs> Nailed it. I do have to say, with these lovely game heart awesome colors the purple zerg looks fantastic it really all of the colors look extra fantastic with this right. with this stronger team color mod enabled it is fantastic and uh, now this game we will get to see all of my glorious um you know foibles on on d display but it shall be fun this you know it's interesting to talk to both you and the prince of bro around these games um because neither one of you ever feels satisfied with the game you play against the other. No, we've had a, a cordial rivalry going since way back into the Wings days. Uh, <laughs> Ping-ponging back and forth, really, uh, based on pretty much whoever is in practice. Um, <laughs> it, it's also, like, never, like, I have played against both of you in the times. You both, like, regress to these old, not-quite-very-good builds. You know, it, it's we almost do a very interesting job of outthinking each other because we know what each other likes so well. We've played so many games that we we try and be like, oh, he's 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 doing this, you know, he's gonna do this. He does this every time, so I'm gonna do this style, which sh he should never see coming. It's uh, it's a little bit like a, a case of us outthinking each other. <laughs> Uh, the real addition to it, of course, is that we uh, we taught the Prince of Bro the Reaper Expand build, and he has loved it since uh. the first time he tried it. So he is doing that, and we'll be getting a Reaper out here. And, you know, you've got that little Reaper stepladder in the back of the base, which leads to some great harassing opportunities. The Reaper stepladder. Gotta hate it. <laughs> it's still better than the old Reaper Alley on Star Station. <laughs> that, that, I uh... hate it. Having like nine reapers show up back when they, especially back when they were the, uh, you know, the extra versus light reapers. Mm. Oh my god, those reapers <laughs> murder things. It got exciting, um, but really just very safe standard builds out of both of you so far. The reaper is jumping up into the base and will be able to get in here, and it's in before the queen of the lings, so it will be doing a little bit of harass on these drones. Here for more of a scout though. Yeah, uh, two Zerglings out just to kind of shadow this thing. Yeah. Just to prevent it from sitting there and, you know, not requiring micro. Like, it's not right now as it gets a drone killed down to the natural. Second drone on the run. Will it get away? Uh, you really can't escape the Reapers, though. I did. Ha <laughs> ha. Where are you? Oh, yeah, you did. Nice. Uh, Barely, like, though. Looks like this Ling be... isn't going to have the same fate, though. No, no. Aww. Uh, poor little Ling. Um... He was so cute. Now, if the queen would have moved out just a little bit further there, we probably could have picked that off, but that queen was derby. And, uh... Uh, but if she hadn't been so high up on the wall, he could have gotten back around into the mineral line. That's true. That's so, true. like, you know. But, uh, alright, so we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a, re a reactor come out on the factory here. That's, um, probably I... indicative of either that's going to be a swap to a barracks, but I don't see another uh, one of these barracks coming in for uh, extra marine production, or it's going to be some Hellion play. I mean, I'm intrigued by the uh, delay on that, that doing it on the factory itself as opposed to getting it on the barracks while the factory is building. I mean, these, these Reapers are going to be really late. Uh, you mean uh, Hellions? Uh, Hellions, yes. Um, but, that are built using a reactor, which also starts with R. Uh, we're also seeing spine crawlers out of uh, myself, and uh, that, that should serve <laughs> to make it hard for these Hellions to get in. Well, that's also a bit of a... I did work on prepping this game with you, and uh, yes, this is a uh, reacts better to another build that the Prince of Bro does. That it's a one base tank all in essentially. True. That he, I'm a, 
a little shocked to not see him going for it here. It would do pretty well on Yansu, I think. Yeah, and also, if we notice, I have not gotten a scout yet. Like, not a true scout. I do have an overlord in the way to spot an army coming across. However, I've really kind of blindly prepared for something I thought was coming. That's true. And blindly prepping for an all-in, while it's not the worst thing to do, it does leave you a little weak for quite a while. Uh, true. Although, I, I honestly don't think it's... Uh that devastating giving I, I still got a 15 hatch out safely and you can see I, i'm droning again and... it also wasn't a very big defense yeah it was a bit of the minimalist defense against his build which is true but now i you know spotting these hellions with the overlords coming across um, you know. and they're never going to get through the spine wall yep. like, best case they might like catch some lings out and roast them but good control there keeps the lings back doesn't let the queen too far off the creep these Hellions are done. Yep. And one Hellion killed, too. Always useful. Yeah, no did we see... We still have this Reaper on the map here, which we're actually... <laughs> there it goes. We're going to see it running into the base. At this point, the Queen should be able to keep it back pretty easily. Maybe not. Maybe it's just it's doing the smarter just... thing of just rallying through for a scout. And he's scouting. He just got a scout on the Roach Warren. Um, the Roach Warren is a little bit of a um, interesting choice by me there. Um, I, I really, like... Given the scout on the Hellions, it wasn't what I expected. And uh, I was just covering all my bases, I think. Yeah, it's not a bad thing to have. Um, it is 150 minerals you could have spent elsewhere, but it, it there's worse things in the world than having a Roach Warren oh. necessarily. And now we're seeing a surround on these Hellions, picking them all off. We're also seeing a bit of an interesting uh, not mining gas in the main base. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, remember those foibles we were talking about? Oh, well. There's a bit of a... Uh, a strike going on. They, uh, there's unsafe conditions in this extractor. The the drones didn't want to be part of that. Uh, OSHA. They're contacting their local OSHA reps, uh, <laughs> making sure that it's up to code before they start working. Yes, yes, and you know, they, they you know they really just want the best for their Zerg drone buddies. Um, yeah. And as a Zerg overlord, I really want the best for them. You can, you can think they're actually the savior of the Zerg race. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Uh, we're seeing uh, some Zergling poke around up here just to get a scout. Uh, a little bit of a, a drone scout down here at the third base. Um, want to make sure that's actually cleared out. Don't want to be caught off guard uh, by yeah, anything down there. Here's the second major mistake in this game. <laughs> um, you know, but given the fact that I don't have any gas, it's perfect. Now I can produce off of everything. It's great. Uh, this is just, true. It's You're just <laughs> trying to give the gas time to catch up. Yeah. You don't want yeah. them to feel left out. Like, they needed a vacation, too. Once again, benevolent overlord over here. Yeah. They're going to go see, like, nice new places. Like, a lot of them were finally allowed to see what it looks like off of Creep. Yeah. Um, Drones don't so often get there. Yeah, how the rest of the world lives. And they, they didn't like it. They're going right back home. You know, and uh, often just only one drone wins that sweepstakes to get it to go across and see a Terran base. And usually they pay with it for their li with their lives. So these guys didn't even have to do that. It's a really good treat for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm also a huge fan of the, uh, the joke of, you know, why did Zerg move so fast on creep? It's because uh, it's, it's disgusting and they're trying to get off of it. Oh, that's fair. You know, uh, <laughs> now we're seeing a move across here. And, this is uh, actually a very large move out here by the Prince of Bro with a lot of Marines in a tank. Does he not have combat shields yet? He does not, but he has plus one weapons, I think, done. Uh, oh my god, the Banelings in this Gameheart thing look fantastic. Oh, I know, don't they? Uh, this base is going to be sniped off without a cancel down here at the third, so no third yet for our Zerg player. Engaging a little bit with these Marines on the high ground is going to go wonderfully as the Banelings connect with almost everything. Just a handful of Marines and Marauders left. The Roaches sh won't be able to clean that up, but I think the Queens should. Um, especially as the medevacs have all been shooed away. And the derpy queens following the medevac, and, you know, but, hey. It was a pretty important part of that fight, actually, to get rid of the medevac. Good well, transfeeds there, keeps the queens alive, too. And uh, uh, now marauders are annoying. The movie. <laughs> and the reestablishment of that third is good to see. It looks like the queens are getting back to their job of injecting all over the place. Now, I have to critique my own third placement here. Um, I really should have been expanding to knock down these rocks over here and expand it up here. Much closer, much easier to defend. I... And a little farther away from the Terran call, make them walk farther. Yeah. yeah I, I agree with that sentiment. And honestly, I think that goes down to uh, Prince Bro's been practicing a little bit more than me. A little bit better on the placements. 
Yeah, and he, uh, Prince of Bro has his, his, a pretty good complement of upgrades right now. He's got stim combat shields, concussive shells, and plus one melee attack done. Yeah, and I, and I plus one melee, it. of course, mean plus one infantry. Hmm. Um, I, I should forget upgrades at this point, which is... Yeah, we don't see any Evo chambers down yet. Uh, we see a second push out here by Prince of Bro stopping at the Zelnaga for a little while here, getting a scout on from this overlord, though. Yep. Um, which is immensely useful. Have that it has led to quite a large swell of lings and banelings at this point in the game. Yeah, 20 lings, 12 banelings coming into production. Spire's almost done. Um, there, this, this could still swing anyway as neither player has a third. There are the Evo Chambers going down along with the Infestation Pit. I'm a little intrigued by the Infestation Pit without any upgrades yet, though. Um, you know, I think this was a case of... Uh, I. I had forgotten the Evo Chambers, and I went to build the uh, Infestation Pit to get that, you know, get my upgrades even further along. I was like, oh, hey, no upgrades. Interesting move now for the for Snow would actually be to kill these rocks to prevent this army from getting up here again. Yeah, that would be definitely... You that would have been... The tanks probably still could have sniped off at least the extractor here, but... I guess maybe drops could be abused up and down that cliff edge, but it would have slowed down the army a lot. Yeah, now we're seeing drones here, which, uh, given the army moving up into the base, is a little scary. Um, that is a little terrifying to see. Ooh, you're going for this excellent surround, actually, right now. Gonna try to swing in on the tanks without any cover, and the tanks go down without almost any fight. And ooh, the rock snipe! The Prince of Bros killed the rocks, forcing oh the beatlings to run all the way around. And that gives him the perfect snipe on this hatchery. And these banelings actually aren't ever even going to make it to the army here. That was a beautiful move to kill those rocks there. Yeah. As I mean, uh, I think one baneling was able to detonate there. It's, it was, and, you know, this is this is pretty brutal right now. <laughs> oh, that was just fantastic. There, there's actually nothing left in this game for the snow yourself. The yeah. Prince of Snow has utterly decimated the army with that amazing rock maneuver yeah, there. Ah, oh, frustrating. I thought I had the perfect angle on that. I got all three tanks instantly. And all of the Marines are pretty bunched up at the top there. Uh, that would have been devastating for, I mean, Bane Links to just roll up there. would have killed everything. The hatch would have survived. That was a pretty game-changing move. That rock snipe, clutch. Clutch. Yeah, it, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a great play. Honestly, in the heat of a battle, to think about that one, really really uh, good uh, just a good play <laughs> yeah and like pretty like well intentioned too he only like had half his army attack it yeah yeah like uh, he was still had the rest of half of his army covering for the other half and it was yeah. just perfect <laughs> really strong showing there out of the prince of bro we'll have to see if he can continue that amount of pressure and sweep through uh in game two for an easy 2-0 victory and hopefully less mistakes for me <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying just for every game for every person. <laughs> right. <laughs>